um, director, mm -hmm. Lord God, trustees, Lord God, advisory council, and all those that will be speaking tonight, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for this past eight months, Lord God, of this year. We thank you, Father, for us moving, Lord God, uh, into your kingdom culture. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that through this conference, Lord God, it will be more evident, Lord God, of what the kingdom culture lifestyle is required of us, Lord. So we just thank you, Father, and we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Watson, uh, for the opening prayer. And now we have a dynamic duo of uh, uh, Minister Itupa and um, Minister uh, Sifo, who are going to come and be our summer song tonight. Then we'll be, they will be followed by our illustrious uh, president of the USA IMF chapter of Apostle James and Prophetess Diane Holly, uh, Holly giving us our marching orders. Amen. Good evening, Amen. everyone. Could you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. To what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take crown, take, take crown, my Lord, to what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I adore you. I adore you. Oh, 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 oh. I am the We are Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, is Minister Tuku on? So, hey, Tuku. Okay. Now, now we'll have our president, Apostle Holly. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we just would like to take this time just to welcome everyone here tonight. Welcome the fact that we're we're in our IMF USA virtual conference for 2023. Praise the Lord for that. The theme for the year has been kingdom culture, kingdom citizens, living in a dark world. So my wife and I, we just pray that you come tonight. We pray that you please come with a spirit of expectancy, believing that the Holy Spirit will do something great in your life tonight. Amen. Amen. And just being open to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us tonight. So I would just would like to say that the Holy Spirit is at the helm. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. For this time and this opportunity to see everybody. We we're hoping that this would be the time that we would be able to get together in person. But um, seeing that it isn't, we just, you know, knowing that God is still in the presence of everybody anyways. So just, you know, want everybody to enjoy themselves, enjoy the service. Amen. 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 And at this time, uh, we're going to prepare our heart to um, and uh, release uh, the line over to uh, Apostle George and uh, Pastor Grace. So we need to prepare our heart. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. Uh, we've, been, we've been on the road for a long time. We just uh, got into Manchester a little while ago. And um, I'm so glad we're able to connect, uh, uh, you know, just a few minutes ago. Uh, Apostle Holly and uh, Prophetess Diane, we thank the Lord for you and um, all the elders of the fellowship, all the trustees, advisory council and executive committee members. And thank you so much for uh, having me to be with you. Over the past few months, uh, we've been able to meet brothers and sisters one-on-one -on -one in flesh and blood. And, um, <laughs> it's, you know, I can't wait to see you all face to face and uh, bless the Lord for you all. And, um, you know, by the grace of the Lord, we're going to meet live next year. As a matter of fact, the Lord says we should go to Washington, D.C. Things are coming. America is on a crossroad. And the Lord said, go and secure Washington, D.C. And so may I ask you all to prepare July 2024. We're going to be in Washington, D.C. We're going to pray over the White House, pray over the Capitol, pray over the Supreme Court. We're going to pray over the places where we established the altar of the Lord. And that is to say to every one of you, the word of Lord came strongly and he said, announce it at this meeting. Let's meet in Washington, D.C. When you meet somebody, say, see you in Washington, D.C. Apostle Catherine, can you say to Minister Anne, see you in D.C. Minister uh, Anne, see you in D.C. Can you say to the shepherds, see, see you in D.C. Apostle you. Holly, can you say to Buddy Gardner, see you in D.C. See you in D.C. Mr. Michel, can you say to Carol, see you in D.C. See you in D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Minister Carol. Now that's going to be a that's going to be a kind of moniker for us. See you in DC, July 2024. As a matter of fact, it's going to be around July 25 or so. I remember that's the anniversary month of the United States. And the Lord impressed on my house strongly. Go there, renew the altar establish the ordinance of the kingdom because what is going to happen in D.C. and the nation of America has been nothing anyone has seen before. But the Lord is giving his kingdom church an opportunity to put the stakes of the kingdom on the ground and to go forth. 
And if you wouldn't mind, just give me a moment before I share the word today, just one minute. Okay. So having said that, it's going to be a wonderful meeting today and this weekend. And I want to thank Lord for everyone, Apostle Holly and the uh, prophetess there. And I want to thank Lord for Apostle Catherine Jones and um, uh, Teacher Stephanie, who have especially been working to make the conference a reality along with Minister Andrea and every one of you. Thank you, Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda for keeping faith with what the fellowship is all about. That if you find something good, you get involved, the people who are with you. And we thank the Lord for you all because of your obedience. The fellowship is alive. The plan of the enemy was to squeeze IMF to death. IMF was not supposed to be alive by now because the enemy sent a serpentine spirit, the spirit of Leviathan against IMF USA. It's been heavy, it's been strong, but I have good news for you. Leviathan has been disempowered from further action against IMF USA. The ministry of the blood has done its work. The angels of the Lord with flaming source of fire are at work. And I want to encourage all of you. The key to our future is what the team of IMF USA conference is all about. Kingdom culture in a dark world. What should we do as a people, the people of Elohim? What should be our approach? How can we live in a way that is different from the world around us? How can we walk on the road, the narrow way, when the world is on the broad way? And that is something I want to drop a scripture for you from the Pauline epistles. I know that this year we have scriptures from the Sermon on the Mount and the Pauline epistles. Let me read for you what the Lord word says and then we will trust the Lord for open heaven. He's going to use everyone who is going to be speaking, no matter how briefly. I want to encourage you, keep an open heart. Whether it's a word or a song or a prophetic message or a teaching, keep an open heart. The Lord may use even an unusual vessel to deliver a critical message. Don't come and cherry pick. Don't say, oh, well, I want to hear Apostle Joy. No, this is not, IMF is not built on a person. It's built on Yeshua. And so when we come together, we're living, loving organism meaning that the Lord can use the youngest one amongst us to deliver a profound word. The Lord can use anybody. So let's pray. Father, that which you are speaking, that which you have revealed, pray that you will bring it forth now. Thank you because you have already begun to degrade Leviathan. Thank you that you have begun to this embowel and you said you will expose and you bring to none effect all these negative actions against this fellowship. Lord, have your way. Bring your counsel to us now in Yeshua's name, amen. Just a few minutes. Look at what Paul said. Philippians chapter two from verse 12. I'm taking kingdom culture from the Pauline epistles. Philippians 2 from verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. How prophetic are these words? It's not just when we meet 
in a conference setting. And then the Apostle Jordan and Pastor Grace are available and everybody behaves nice, gentle. He says now, much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is Elohim which walketh in you, but to will and to do of his own good pleasure. Then now begin to mark now, verse 13, verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Whether you are in the prayer section, whether you are doing administrative work, whether you are doing operational work, whether you are promoting, whether you are on Facebook, do all things, capital A-L-L, -L, without murmurings and disputings, that you may be, so that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Elohim, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Yeshua that I may have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Brothers and sisters, IMF USA, we, we have invested by the grace of the Lord the better part of 22 years nonstop to build to build, get brethren into various degrees of understanding of kingdom culture, connect brethren by the spirit, and the fellowship has been built, has been established. The Lord says, if we are going to go forward, our tongue put a bad luck, our mind, let it be renewed. Our heart let it be transformed. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. One of the work of the Leviathan spirit is to make brethren misuse their tongue, to make them murmur, complain, make them, you know, we call it the way, way, way spirit. The way, way, way spirit destroys fellowship. If we are going to go further, we need to discipline our tongue that it only builds up. We need to discipline our tongue. It brings forth the word of faith, the word of encouragement, the word of love, the word of grace, always, all the time. He says, so that we'll be blameless and harmless sons of Elohim without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Politicians lie. Politicians distort reality. Politicians do so many things. But for us, on the opposite way, you say, look, it is possible to be the sons of God in the midst of a crooked generation. We get to do things differently. This vision, the law says some people are tired. It is okay to be tired. But what do the people of the world do when they are tired? The people of the world can say to a boss, please, let me take some time out. The people of the world will not destroy something from within. The people of the world can take a time out to go and refresh and refire and come back. Lord says some people are tired. Unfortunately, they, they want everyone to believe that they are still in it, but they are not in it anymore. They lost the passion. They lost the vision. They've lost the zeal. They lost the zest. And it is time for everybody to be very honest to himself. You see, IMF will never die. The law said in 2020, 2009, it says it's impossible for anything born of a woman or any demon sent by Satan to kill this fellowship. He said he had passed through 2009. So with that confidence, the Lord wants me to say, it's okay, anybody who is tired, you want to rest, 
You want to drop off, that's okay. Don't destroy what the Lord is building. Don't become an enemy of Yeshua HaMashiach. Don't lacerate his body. Let's walk in love. Let's walk in holiness. Let's walk in faith. Let's build up each other. Let's build up the saints. Let's build up the walk. We want to see each other soon. And by the grace of the Lord, we are going to see each other. We are going to encourage each other. We're going to get each other that kind of Texan beer hog. We will have it. There is a tomorrow. And the Lord is saying, keep your hand on the plow. Don't be distracted. If people are tired, you should be able to discern when people are tired. And don't let them put venom into you to make you tired and weak also. You are not doing this thing for anybody. It's the Lord himself that we are serving. And so I want to encourage everybody, sincerity is very critical. Let's walk in sincerity. This vision, the Lord wants IMF USA to be a model, a model for other chapters worldwide. IMF is, USA is one of the seven model chapters the Lord has ordained. And the Lord is saying it's time to refire. It's time to refire. It's time to get ready to sow because the church is the light. The kingdom church, and that includes IMF, is the light of the world and is the salt of the earth. So let's learn to trust the Lord to take us from glory to glory. I'm speaking to you by revelation. What the Lord has been saying to me in the past several weeks he says, you know what? I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do something I've not done in a long while. And I want to encourage every one of you, if you are for this vision, sign up. Take your place. Give it your best. And let the Lord take us from glory to glory. And if for any reason, there are things you have to offer that is not yet being offered. Make yourself available. Report for duty and say, here am I, Lord. The Lord will use you. As a matter of fact, we don't need titles to serve the Lord in a living, loving organism. We just need to be that part of the body the Lord has appointed us. He's made you the, the eye, be the eye. The leg be the leg, the toe be the toe, the finger be the finger, whatever is made you to be, be that. And that is the way we are going to live as a living, loving organism in a hateful world, in a world full of hatred, animosity, you know, backbiting, backstabbing, and all that. Let us be a people whose hearts are pure. Let's be a people whose minds are renewed. Let's be a people who love genuinely from our heart of hearts. Let's be a people who the Lord can use to prepare USA, the remnant in the USA, to escape the wrath to come. There is a wrath that is coming. It's going to come more than a hurricane, more than a cyclone. And the Lord has appointed that through the assignment of IMF, the remnant in America from south to north from east to west, from central to every corner of America, the Lord will use IMF USA to prepare the way of escape because it is his prophetic assignment for us. I want you to reflect for a moment. Every one of us here, can you just bend our heads for a moment and reflect on what we've had? Just a few minutes before we resume. Just a few minutes. Everyone.
Okay. I like to call Apostle Ron. I like to offer a word of prayer then, a roundup. Amen. Father, we so thank you. And we're humbled to be before you in your presence with your saints, with our brothers and our sisters. Father, I thank you for the hearts that I see, I experienced through all the brothers and sisters that are on the line today. Father Apostle George, his discipline and diligence concerning the vision. And Father, I know in my heart, when you speak of vision, nothing on planet Earth can destroy your vision. People can come and go. My wife said they can feel great. They can feel some sort of way. As Apostle George said, they may get tired. But when you speak of vision, you call and select the people who will come in and finish. When you speak a word in the earth, it doesn't come back to you void. So a vision in the earth is your word. It is truth. And I thank you, Father, for sending all the allocations, open heavens and grace at each one of the vessels that heard what you spoke to Apostle George tonight that are made up in their hearts that their ways are going to please you that they're gonna walk in this. We all will walk in this, Father, as you instruct us by Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to understand it in our head, but our hearts need to follow you by the Holy Spirit. Not come in it with preconceived ideas, assumptions, or notions, but just say, Father, what do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? What do you want us to say? And in this, you will lead us into places around people, ideas, and situations that we never could have thought of. Help us to be open, Father, to hear your voice and not hearing it, Father, with something that we've already put together for your stamp of approval. We want to be led by you and what we've heard. Thank you, Father, for what you're about to do. What No, what you are doing and what you're about to do through this great vision and this organism called IMF internationally and IMF USA. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you've helped us to endure through, that we've grown through this far to accomplish what you call us to do. We thank you for it and we bless you for it in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Can we all say hallelujah? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, on that note, on that note, I hereby declare IMF USA 2023 conference formally open in the realm of the spirit and in the physical that these two days under open heaven, let the Lord use various vessels to bring his counsel. And may all of us be blessed and may the glory of the Lord rest upon you. And by the grace of the Lord, we will also, you know, bring another dimension of the world tomorrow with, before we conclude the meeting. May the Lord use everyone for his glory. And may the name of the Lord be exalted in this conference. In Yeshua's name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Over to the Lord's yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Over to the moderator. Okay. At this time, we're going to have, um, thank you so much, Apostle George. Um, and at this time, we're going to have opening remarks, and I'm going to call the names, but uh, as I call the names, make sure that we stay within the time allotted to us, um, so we have to keep up with our time, amen. Uh, first of all, uh, we will have um, Apostle Harris and Pastor past Prophetess Kathleen Harris, uh, Apostle Terrence and Victoria Block, uh, Pastor Ron and Pastor Janda, uh, Teacher Stephanie and Dr. Catherine Jones in that order. So if you just keep uh, your time on that, amen. Amen. I would like to say greetings to everyone, Apostle George, Pastor Grace, and all those on the line and all those that are involved in IMF. I just sense the Lord loosening a magnetic spirit to draw people to his vision. And it's spreading all across the country as was spoken. But with it, there's an adhesive glue. Because once we come, 
there's no separating. There's no dispersing. There's no division. The word says when we're weak, you will make us strong. So we are strong in you, Lord, and we will accomplish and we will rebuild IMFUSA in connection with IMFA internationally. We know you have called for IMF, Lord. There's no doubt in anyone's mind. And so you will use us to fulfill the charge that you've given us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, Apostle Terrence and Victoria. We have a video. We'll see whether or not we can release it. We're going to okay. try and see. See if I can do this. Can you all see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, let's see if you can hear the video and see if I can. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to. Holy Spirit, let's do this. I need you. Okay, can you see the video? Can you hear it? No. It's on, it's, it's on pause right now. What about now? Yes. Yes. That's fine, but we can. If you can increase the volume. If yeah. not, we can work on it and try to do it later. Okay, so the volume's up as high as it can go. us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places 
in Christ Jesus. We're going to the next chapter, Ephesians, the, the third chapter, verse 10 and 11. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Heaven is released from the inside of us, yeah. filling the atmosphere that carry us into the realm of the kingdom. Could you read his last couple of In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, King James Version, it says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And in Luke 17 and 20 through 21, King James Version, it says, and in verse 20, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither should they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So here is a practical example to a spiritual reality. If, if no electricity were generated or used on earth, our physical world would be much darker inside a place at daytime and outside during the night. Where there is a major electrical blackout in cities and regions, the brightness on satellite pictures looking down from space is diminished. Likewise, if the light of our heavenly Father within us diminished for various reasons, we, we will be imitate a weak spiritual light. And his kingdom will not advance in our lives or in the world. This is not the lifestyle of kingdom culture. Matthew 5 and 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. But when the kingdom is flowing in us and through us by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, it is like a great generator. This happens when we learn how his kingdom functions and then act on his company. Mm -hmm. Then we will shine. We will give glory to our heavenly father as we light the way for others to receive the kingdom in their own lives, producing miracles and transformation. Mm -hmm. So kingdom principle, we would like to leave with you, baby. That the kingdom of God is within us. So our lifestyle demonstrates and it manifests the kingdom culture in our in the earth, in our families, in our community, in our world, in our nation, and then in our community. God bless you, South Korea. It's so good to be with you all today. Blessings. Amen. 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 Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda. There we go. I'm trying to get this thing unmuted. He's man in the control, so we apologize. <laughs> greetings, greetings to everyone, my brothers and my sisters. It is such a delight to be here. Apostle Jordan already talked about our big Texas hugs, and you know I'm always for that because we are a communal people, and it is important that we stay together. And I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am excited to be here today to encourage each and every one of you to be in unity of fellowship. You know, uh, it just hit me when we were just sitting here and it might not sound the way it's sounding in my head, but it just hit my heart to say this to you. I pray for you. You pray for me. We're all a part of God's body. And that's one thing that I want you to remember. As we look at all the devastation that's going on around the world in Maui, the most recent, a whole island just in devastation, mm. in devastation, history destroyed. But when that thing is in your heart, 
when it's in your heart, you can't take that away. And so it's so important that we're united here together in order to be an encouragement to one another, but more so to be a light. There's so many things that's happening in the world right now to take our focus away. And the minute you look away, you can lose your place. So again, just stay in the word focus came to heart. Don't lose our focus. Always look to the hills from which come as our help. No matter what devastation you're going through, there's always a brother and sister. On the screen, we're to the left, to the right, above or below. Remember that. Don't be in secrecy because we have a body of Christ here united together. Each one of us have a different strength. And we have to utilize all those things in order to make it through this because the enemy could whisper to you in your head in that voice that sounds so familiar to you that have you doubting your brothers and sisters i see that i see that just so prevalent in some of the things that we're going through here and it just burdens my heart so you know if it burdens my heart it burdens the heart of the father Again, somebody already mentioned that we are the salt and the light. We have to remain the light. If people don't have faith enough to trust in a father that they can't see, that's where we take that place. We have to be that light. We have to recalibrate, forget about all the things that we're going through and focus on the kingdom. And it's just so amazing how Holy Spirit gives Apostle George these things. So we have to, again, stay in the word and think about even now, keeping us so close to the word. If we're reading, if we're reading, taking the uh, Bible reading scriptures of the day, it causes us to draw so much closer. It causes us to have that burden for our brothers and, the, and our sisters, not to just look and say, oh, that's them and that's not me, but we're here to be an encouragement. And that's the beauty that IMF USA brings here when we're able to join together in fellowship, putting aside everything else that seems important, you know, just taking the opportunity to know that where your value is, that, that little part that you might be missing when you're going through things, we can connect with our brothers and our sisters and prayerfully all of us here can trust one another enough because of our lifestyles. Forget the flesh part, but look at the fruits on our tree. So I don't know where I am. I forgot to look as far as our five, our five minutes that we have to divide. He says, I always take the time, but y'all, <laughs> Do not allow the enemy to separate us in no shape, form, or fashion. But again, connect, stay connected, get on the prayer line. And I know there's an appeal going for, I'm asking all the people that's part of GPRC that has been here before, get on there. We have to labor in prayer in order to bring that connectivity back again. You know, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We got to remember that. It's not the individuals that we see. It's the enemy trying to manipulate and use, you know, all those things that the enemy is trying to introduce and causing us to look at our brothers and our sisters. So take this time to hear what the father is saying. Forget about the faces of the individuals. Examine our hearts so we'll be able to hear clearly what's going on in the spirit. Amen. Amen. I am so glad to save everyone tonight. And uh, for me, Apostle Dennis, this is when you mention that and you put it in the chats, there's certain things that I pay attention to real closely. I'm just, I'm wired like that. I like seeing things, building things, repairing things. And when you mention that about the praise leader and how dear he was to your heart, I'm like that also. You get really close to people when you know them. As scripture says, Apostle Dennis, the Bible says, know them that labor among you and for you to write that you've seen something in this individual through all the years that you knew that person intently in your heart you knew that individual is a true servant of yeshua hamashiach and here's something that comforts me because i'm like that also it you 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 get really close to people and it's a tearing almost mm -hmm. it feels like in the spirit man it's like they've been ripped apart but what has helped me all these years apostle dennis sharp is God gave me a simple phrase that kind of calms me. It doesn't take away the hurt, but it calms me. And he let me know that that person is now in my future. Mm. And I went, huh? Maybe. He said, they're now in your future. You don't have to worry about all the memories here on planet Earth and everything you did together in ministry here by Holy Spirit. The greatest hope there is is that person now 
is in your future. And our job is to endure while we're here that we may see them again. So I want to encourage you, my dear brother, with that. That person you mentioned is now in your future and you'll celebrate one day with him. Amen. And it's just one of those things, you know, for us. And the other thing I heard for us is the body. Hey, y'all, I'm a, we made it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that. We made it. Apostle Dennis just put in a, a praise leader that's gone on to be with the Lord. He has kept us this far by faith, by us trusting in him. It's a simple word, just simple thing. I'm not going to say we've completely in total faith. And scripture talks about trusted Yeshua up to this point. I told Apostle Harris one time, I said, things can press on you so hard, you're running on hopium. You're just hoping he does it. Lord, I hope you come through. I know you. I'm hoping you'll do this. You run on hopium sometimes. Hope is not bad as long as we're hoping in Yeshua. That's not a bad thing. At least we're not trusting in self. So sometimes we run on hopium. But he knew it. And by his mercy, he's kept us for this day. He's given us this day and what he's expecting out of us. Forget those things that are behind us. We can't go back and correct or over and, and redo any of that. But we are to press toward, from this day forward, press toward the mark of a higher calling. Not in elevations of ministry, but it's in the calling of Yeshua, getting to him. That's where we are now. Everything that's taking place in IMF, in local ministries, in families, as my wife often says, it did not catch Yahweh by surprise. Some of the things that come up in people, some of the things that come out in people, some of the things that they do and they say, it didn't catch him by surprise. He had to bring it to the surface so we would see it, whether it would be for him or be against him. There's no middle ground. He literally had to bring this to the surface because it was hidden before. Now there's things that you've heard that you've seen. You're like, I never knew that was in you, whether that's good or bad indifferent or whatever, but he brought it to the surface. Why? Because he's gotten IMF to a place now where it's about to march forth in his ways. And that was a word that the Lord gave me Sunday. And it was a simple word called ways. We've seen it in the scriptures, one of those things you'll read over, go by it, but you don't know how many times. I think it's in scripture like 42 times, just the word ways. And I'll give you a quick definition. Ways, most of the time you'll see a word, like I told them Sunday, in the New Testament, it means one thing. And in the Old Covenant, it means something else. The word way or ways means the exact same thing, whether it's in the Hebrew or the Greek. The one in the Greek is hodos, and the one in the Old Covenant is derik. And it means your way, a road, a journey, a path, progress, a means, a distance, a journey, a manner, direction, a habit, course of life, and moral character. And scripture says, when a man's ways please the Lord, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if you'll turn from your wicked ways, that means from something in the past, we're here at right now. Our feet are in the present. We can't go back to yesterday. So erase anything that you thought you'd done, that you thought you missed up. He's looking at what we're going to do going forward with this vision of IMF he's given all of us. And to keep it real, none of us have fulfilled our part in it 100%. Because we're not Yeshua. And we're not 100% full of Holy Spirit. But God still loves us enough to trust us with his vision. We showed up tonight and will show up tomorrow to get further instruction on what he wants us to do to march forward with his vision. This is what he's calling us to do. It's not us looking at ourselves being perfected in us. We're perfected in Yeshua. And he will guide us and lead us if we were willing to listen. So I encourage everybody, reach out to people. If there's a face or a name that comes up to you that you once knew that was in IML, he may be bringing that face up for a reason. Reach out to him. Let them know the conference is going on. Let them know the time. Send them this itinerary and schedule. It may shock you some of the people that show up and come back because he's wooing, calling saints and servants back. Satan may have boxed their brains in and they want to come back and he's just, you know, like Apostle George, some people may be tired, but he may be reaching out, wooing them back. And your voice may be the person that gets them back in position before we meet seeing each other in Washington next year. I can't explain to you how important that place, the timing of that is. Because every time we meet in a strategic place, something, I ain't going to call it severe, something dynamic happens after the meetings. So I encourage you all, thank God for all you being here. I love you all. And it's going to be a powerful weekend. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. That's one of the things I, I love about being a part of this body. It's just the beauty of being a part of a family that we are led by Holy Spirit. We're not led by religion. And when we're led to pray for one another, we do so. And Apostle Dennis, I know I speak for all of us when I say that we love you and we love your heart and just thankful that you are a part of this family. I've been, um, there's just a beauty in us gathering together. And uh, especially this week, I've been really thinking a lot about, you know, IMF and, and especially this conference. And one of the things that just was brought back to my remembrance is that um, the origins of IMF, it wasn't conceptualized in the mind of man but it was it, it was brought forth in, in the heart of God. So Elohim, he he birthed IMF, he birthed the vision, and he put it in the bosom of man, and he gave us the seed to water it. And it kind of reminded me of, of Adam and Eve that the Lord, what he did is he placed them in this, this beautiful garden, and he put them in that garden to to dress it and to keep it. And as we all know the story that they, the, the plans of Elohim were, were altered because of the insertion of self. And because of the insertion of self, we know what happened is it led to a series of events that were not originally contemplated in what was supposed to be our life. But I think it's important for us to realize, and one good thing about being a part of this ministry is we're all very transparent with one another, is that when we step outside of the will of Elohim, it not only affects us, but it affects other people. And as I was just thinking about what he has provided for us and given to us, it made me think about Adam and Eve, and, and I wrote down a couple of things that we, here is the blessing. We are the blessing. And we all came together by divine ordinance. It had nothing to do with any one of us. We didn't choose to meet one another. The Father brought us together. He orchestrated it all. There's many of us whose paths I would have probably never crossed. An Apostle Dennis, I happened to meet him in Washington, D.C., and many of you, I would not have crossed your path. It's the Lord has ordained this to be so. And we're here by divine election. And we are here also for purpose and assignment. So we're not just here as a religious organization. We're here to be led by the spirit. And I think it's so important for us to, to just sit back and, and look what the Lord has done. I mean, many of us have known each other, some over 10 years, some over five some four, some three, some two, but just look at the diversity on the line, the different nations and the different gifts and callings. That's not by coincidence. And the truth of the matter is, and let's all be honest, as uh, Apostle Ron has mentioned, we, we just scratched the surface of, of why we were brought together. I know that Elohim has a bigger purpose for us as a corporate body. And if I'm being transparent, we're not gonna accomplish what he's given us to do as a corporate body if, if we're gonna do it as an occasional hookup for, for lack of a better word. It can't be done that way. As Apostle George said, we're either in or we're out. And as sometimes we have to get to that place where we're going to decide whether or not we are going to serve the Lord or if we're going to serve ourselves. But the scripture that I just want to share with you, and I think it has a lot to do with us and where we are, is Joshua 6. And I just want to read a couple of verses. And we all have heard this scripture. It says, now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given unto thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty man of valor. And ye shall compass the city 
all ye men of war and go around about the city once, thus shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horn, and the seventh day shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass. Remember that. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall extend up every man straight before him. This world that we're in, we can see the things that are happening today. Many of us have never even envisioned it. It's like, this is such a dark world and we are in a massive wall of Jericho. But the Lord wants to use each and every one of our vessels to tear it down and to free its people. We have a purpose. And just from this scripture, what I got for us is, just as with Jericho, he has given us the cities and the nation. And he has already assured us victory. And he has a battle plan that he's given us. And he has already made it accessible so that we can have the men of war that is needed for that battle. We are the men of war. Separate, we're not as great as we are together. And I just pray, especially during this conference and during this weekend, that as, as was mentioned, this, this fire, the embers, if you open your heart to it, will begin to ignite again. And I just pray that not only do we accept this assignment, that when we accept it, we keep it. And when we keep it as a corporate body, what we would do together is continue to hear the Lord and him guiding us in how to complete it. So I'm just looking forward to what the Lord is going to release through all of us because all of us have a piece of the puzzle. I bless you and Apostle Dennis, we will always keep you in prayer. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. I had to get up for a minute. Somebody's car alarm was going off and I knew it was my time up and I didn't want you guys to have to hear that. It was pretty loud. Amen. Thank you so much, Teacher Stephanie. I greet you all in the name of our Lord, Yeshua Jesus. Welcome, my personal welcome to you all to the 2023 IMF USA Conference. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. You know, first and um, foremost, I glorify our Father for who he is. I thank him for sharing his heart with us through his servants. You know, Apostle Fred, um, Apostle George, um, just everyone who has um, prayed for us daily. Um, the Go Global Governing Council, the Global Executive C Committee, I thank the Lord for each and every single one of you. I praise him for bringing me into his body, which allows me to fellowship with all the members of his body. And like Teacher Stephanie said, um, I guarantee you, I would not have ever met any one of you had it not been Holy Spirit leading me to Kilgore, Texas. And if it were not for this commission and the yearly conference, I wouldn't know you all. But I'm so thankful and grateful that I do. I'm grateful for the vision that has been given to Apostle George and Pastor Grace, you know, to gather the members of the remnant together, to work together by what every joint supplies locally, nationally, and globally. We thank Holy Spirit for guiding and keeping us on the narrow path of righteousness. Amen. You know, every year we come together in worship, we come together in prayer and fellowship, and it's a time when we as members of the body share with each other what our father has been speaking to our spirit. And each year during the conference, there's something that Holy Spirit impresses upon my spirit um, that's needful, um, that's encouraging, and, and sometimes corrective because of the willingness of those who will allow him to speak through them to us. And I, I, I'd like you guys to just go on this journey with me for just a moment. Right now, just take one moment 
to think about what you did yesterday from the moment that you woke up until the time that you went to bed. Just think about it. Now think about this morning and what you did until you joined the conference. Now I'll, I want you all to just take a deep breath and then just listen. Deep breath and listen. Did you hear that? Did you hear that trumpet blowing? It was so loud. It was earth shaking. It was mind boggling. Did you hear it? Imagine yourself running to the window to look out to see what's going on. And you see two people walking down the street and all of a sudden one is taken up and the other is left. What's going on? It is that twinkling of an eye that Yeshua spoke about in the book of Matthew. His return is right now, right this moment. Time is up. Yeshua is here. What will he find you doing? Will you be one taken up or one left? The difference is how we are living the life that we've been given. You know, for the past seven and a half months, as I focused on our theme, Kingdom Culture, I've taken time to take a close look at how I'm living my life. What matters most to me can be summed up in what I choose to spend my available time on. Just like money is the most valuable resource in the world, time is the most valuable resource in the kingdom. And our dual citizenship, our being in the world but not of the world, causes us to have to make a choice every day to seek kingdom first, to seek the kingdom of Elohim first, if we are going to remain on that straight and narrow path, and if we are going to intentionally use what has been given to us for kingdom. Because we don't, you know, if we don't make the choice daily, life circumstances will certainly make the choice for us. Life cir circumstances will spend our time for us. Is what I'm doing kingdom focused? Right now, you know, I'm thinking about right before they came to arrest Yeshua, he asked his disciples to watch and pray while he went to a solitary place to pray. When he returned, he found them sleeping and he said, could you not tarry with me for one hour? Wow, one hour. How many of us don't value the kingdom business enough to spend one hour doing what he placed in us to do? What do we spend our available time on? How are we living? Is your life reflective of kingdom culture or are you living according to the world's culture? When we don't pay attention to time, when we don't value time, it's easy to get caught up in the cares of the world. You know, waking up each day, doing everything as usual, what we normally do, doing things that, you know, really are considered cares of the world. What to eat, what to drink, what to wear, where am I going to go today? What, you know, what I'm going to do today? Focused on the world. Um, money, you know, we, we focus on money to keep living the way that we're living. And looking at myself, what I found. I value what I spend my time on. Early this month, you know, I had the opportunity to share with, you know, the women in ministry conference. And I told them that we're each given 24 hours every day. And if you work, you know, eight hours are working hours. And at least six of them are sleeping hours. So at best, we each have 10 available hours. And those hours, you know, are not continuous. They're spread across the day. You might have two hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, six hours in the evening. What do we spend our time on? If time was money, will we pay more attention to what we do with it? It matters. Because at a time that we know not, the trumpet's going to sound to usher in the return of Yeshua. And when, when it sounds, there's going to be no time remaining to do it tomorrow. There's going to be no time remaining to do it after I finish doing something else that I value. Matthew 24. 42, 46, from the King James Version, it reads, watch therefore, for you know not the hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, 
he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. If we knew when Yeshua would return, we would have watched to ensure that we have oil in our lamps. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? He charged us to take dominion over his creation. He charged us to teach, to train, to equip, to activate, and to release sons of Elohim in the earth realm. In other words, make disciples. He charged us to go after the lost sheep. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. May we not be found having hidden our talent in the ground. Amen. Let's use this time during the conference to look at ourselves. And if needed, change course and make sure we are doing first things first and making the main thing the main thing that we're using our available time wisely, knowing that our king is coming. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, just sitting here listening to all of the statements that have been made, and certainly we should consider ourselves open that this session, that this conference has been opened by the voices that we've heard, messages that have been spoken, um, all the things that that have that we have imbibed and received on this day will lead us to believe that the Father has opened indeed this conference um, in our hearts. Now, we're gonna ask Minister Jacqueline McCarty, she would now come and uh, lead us in giving. Amen, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. It is so wonderful to see everybody's faces. Um, it's time for giving, as he just uh, mentioned just now. Uh, if you like to use PayPal, the address is IMFUSA Living Loving Network at gmail.com. If you desire to give using Zelle or banking information, please contact Ms. Carol. And her address is C-A-B-E-S-S-E-N-T -S -S -E at yahoo.com. And the scripture that I have for, to read this evening is going to be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So that each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Father, we thank you for those who gave and for those who have it in their heart to give, but may not have it at this particular time. We ask you, Father, to bless the giver as well as the gift. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Jackie. And now we come to um, our announcements. And uh, we'll let you know that tomorrow morning we'll be starting at 10 o'clock Eastern uh, AM and 9 o'clock Central um, will be the start. Our moderator for tomorrow will be Tavon and Kiasha Green. Um, so, so we thank you for all of you showing up on today, being a part of this opening and, and having our hearts open to receive this charge that's been given to us by all these voices and vessels that have come forth on today. And we look forward to seeing you uh, again on tomorrow. And with that, we're gonna bring uh, uh, Minister Taylor McCarty, and he's going to come and he's going to pray us out. Amen. Amen. What a start to this uh, conference. 
I ask you that you bow your heads. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you allowed us to see, Father. We just thank you for, for the conference that's open now, Father. We just thank you for your words that has gone forth. Father, I just pray, ask them, Father, that you would just bless each individual to just open up their hearts and receive, Father. Father, I pray, ask them, Father, that you would just bless us to do things not murmuring, Father, but doing it willfully for you, Father. We're not doing it for man, Father. Everything we do, Father, let us do it as unto you, Father. And Father, we just thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for Apostle George and Pastor Grace, Father. And Father, I pray, ask them, Father, that you would just, uh, as we close this out tonight, Father, I pray, Father, that you would just continue to let Holy Spirit have his way on tomorrow. We just thank you, Father, and we just seal this prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you all on tomorrow. Hallelujah. 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 Love y'all. Love you. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Good night. 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 Good